Brilliant. All right, everyone. Welcome. I'm Summer Bach. This is Lauren Haynes. Hey, everyone. We are going to do a Guts and Glory episode today on making kimchi. I want to show you how it's done. And we've made up a new recipe today to try, and we're just going to show you how freaking easy it is to do it. So let's Ready? do it. Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. So first, I have Napa cabbage that I soaked Traditionally, um, Korean kimchi is made with soaking the cabbage for three hours in salt water. Um, so I've already drained it, and this is drained Napa cabbage here in the bowl. I've cut it into these little, about an inch, square inch pieces, but I will show you real quick. So Napa cabbage is fairly large, and I'll show you how to easily get it down to that size, because it can be a little intimidating, and we don't want you to lose a finger. So here, here's what the leaves look like, a little drippy. Napa cabbage leaves. The first thing to do is slice them down the middle. So just take your knife and start at the top of the rib. And then you can turn it or just finish it out and slice in the opposite direction. So now we have these little inch wide pieces. And you can just cut those as you normally would. You can fold them over again when you get to the green part so you keep the size consistent. One of the best things about kimchi, I think, is the variety of texture. So starting with these little square pieces that are kind of crunchy and kind of leafy at the beginning is really fun. Sweet. So let's add what's next, carrots. So here we have about two cups of mashed sticks, carrot and mashed sticks. And um, you can kind of play with the, different, with the different shapes of your vegetables. So we have really thin slices, kind of, well, they're hexagons, but they could be rounds. <laughs> so we have this shape of daikon and this shape of carrot, but you could switch them, and then you could have mashed sticks of daikon and rounds of carrot. So carrot into the bowl. Then we have just one inch pieces of green onion, the whites and the greens. And then we have about five or six cups of thinly sliced daikon, mini daikon. We just had some little ones. Daikon usually grow to be about a foot and a half. So, so you only need about six cups of the slices. So now we'll mix all this up in the giant bowl. Okay, let's scoot it over here a little bit so people can see. So, um, I mean, what's interesting about this is we're showing you one way to cut it, but you can actually cut this all however you want. Some people will use a grater and grate everything. It's just really dependent upon what kind of texture you want when the ferment is done. So, I mean, what I'm excited about with this is my favorite sort of trick or whatever you want to call it for making kimchi. I think this is the way that makes my kimchi really yummy. I think it's two things. It's salt, like the amount of salt you use is crucial. And then I also think that making a paste with the spices, it, it totally takes us to a new level. So we're going to do that right now. Let's, let's just do the old paste. So I use a Cuisinart for this, and um, I'm just going to show you here. I'm going to chop up this little onion. You want to switch with me? Um, maybe I'll do it one more time. All right. And then this is some ginger. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let you talk about ginger actually. So this is ginger chopped up with the skin on, why? Well, I like to keep the ginger skin on because it has so many like, so much more nutrition. Um, if it's organic ginger, it doesn't really matter. If it is an organic ginger, that's totally fine, but you definitely right. wanna take the skin off because that's gonna be where the pesticides are hiding out, especially um, in something with a kind of thick skin like ginger. Yeah, well, hey, show them how you peel ginger ah, out of that. Because you have like a little sure. secret trick. This is a fun technique that I learned when I worked in an Asian restaurant. So here we just have an ordinary kitchen spoon. You can use a large spoon, a small spoon, it really doesn't matter. And you just scrape, scrape it. You just scrape all the sides of the turmeric or ginger. This is turmeric. And it comes right off. And it's so much more safe and easy than using a knife. And well, it's a... Yeah, yeah. Um, let me interrupt you. <laughs> let me talk over you. Sure. No. So what happens when you do this with a spoon is it just scrapes off the skin and you don't scrape off any of the actual rhizome or the root. So you're left with more. Um, and what she's doing right now, Lauren is doing this with turmeric. 
So we have fresh turmeric. It's an amazing herb. It's one of my favorites. It's in the bitters um, that we make as well. So that's really exciting. But this fresh turmeric is awesome because it's good for, you know, inflammation, liver, and uh, it's one of those just tonic herbs that I really think you should have in your diet as much as possible. So what better way than to put it in kimchi where then now you have it as a condiment that you can add to your meals every day, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason that um, we're peeling this turmeric is because the, the skin on this one looks a little <laughs> rough. Um, if it's looking really fresh, you probably don't need to take the skin off, but really this one looks like it's been um, aged. <laughs> And the beauty of, I think, ferments is you really can have a kitchen sink type of ferment where you take everything that's going bad mm. that you don't want to eat and you just put it all in a crock and pour some salt brine over it and it becomes a wonderful, nutritious, delicious either condiment or side item. Yep. Awesome. So we have turmeric in here. We have ginger and onion. Now we're going to add garlic. We've got about eight cloves of garlic, probably the equivalent to two tablespoons. Um, and, you know, garlic is one of those things. How do you peel garlic? Yeah, there's lots of different ways. Do you have a, do you have a go? I have a favorite technique. Yeah. And it drives me crazy when people don't do this. Sometimes you don't want to, but my favorite is be really careful with this knife. Um, I just like to smash it. And if you smash the garlic, look how easily the skin just peels right off. No flaking. It comes all the way off. And then you can mince this or you can just leave it whole if you want. But well, we're, we're putting gonna, it in a paste. We're going to leave it whole, so we'll just stick it in here. Cool. Nice. Sometimes for soup or whatever, I just throw it in there. Oh, you can also just cook garlic in the skin in a soup, and when it's done, it'll come right out and be so sweet and delicious. Yum! Mm -hmm. All right, next up, we're going to add red chili flakes. This is about one tablespoon of red chili flakes right into the paste. And then um, I'm going to add some of our salt in here just to okay. kind of like get some of the salt going. Sure. For the whole batch of this, we're probably going to use about three or four tablespoons. Um, but we're just going to start out, I'm going to put two tablespoons of salt in here right now. And then I'm gonna kind of show you my favorite trick for figuring out how much salt. Cause okay. you know, we're sort of measuring here, as you can see, and we'll share <laughs> the full recipe with you. We have measured it out for you. But when I make this just, you know, without worrying about, you know, anybody else, mm -hmm. like every time I make it, I literally just eyeball everything and I taste and that's how I determine, you know, like what the recipe is gonna be. Sure. The problem with that is that then like three weeks later, when I go to eat the kimchi or the sauerkraut or whatever I've made, if it's awesome, I'm not exactly sure what I made. Right. So it is good to start getting in the habit of writing stuff down. So we wrote it down for you. We're getting better at this too. We um, love you guys, so we gave you a measurement, but honestly, the measuring was an afterthought. <laughs> it was, and um, we're saying this, right, so that you know that you can just go in the kitchen and start to eyeball this stuff. I'll give you my tricks here as soon as we're done blending up. Like I said, I'm probably going to do about two tablespoons total. Um, so we're just going to add some salt. And this two tablespoons here, we had two tablespoons in the puree. And so the salt has one main function, which is to help pull the water out of the vegetables, which means, you know, you're going to have brine. So we're going to basically mix all this um, salt into the cabbage, into the carrots, daikon and green onion and you'll notice it's like really starting to glisten all of a sudden that's because all the water is now being dehydrated out of the cells which is so cool and then i'm going to add this scary mixture and i'm just going to use my hands this is like you know my eyes are watering a little bit right now i'm going to start crying by the time this is over it's okay because of the chemistry. it's like i'm so passionate I just get really emotional and move it's like it's it is really pretty. It is really pretty. A lot of live organisms that are about oh to start growing. God. It's like, congratulations. <laughs> We've made birth certificates for each one. 
Oh my god, I'm really like dying over here. Really? Let me do it. I'll do it. <laughs> I want to do it. Good. It's a collaborative effort. Oh, this is my favorite part. Does it make me cry? Whew. I have four eyes, so I have a little lead on you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. So sometimes when I make when I make kimchi, oh my goodness, I <laughs> go to Whole Foods and I buy their brand, or you can use any awesome organic sriracha. And instead of the chili paste, I know it's sacrilegious, but I'll use sriracha and veggies in salt, and it'll ferment the same way. Let's just make the best of the video with our eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome. Cool. Okay. I think it's done. <laughs> wow, that really, uh, really hits you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me tell you about my two tricks, but I'm gonna talk to you with my eyes closed because this uh, is so strong. <sighs> well, don't, don't be deterred. What kind of onion did oh you Oh my god, a Vidalia onion? Can we like turn on Don't a fan? touch your eyes. Yeah, do you have them? No. <laughs> no. Okay, folks. All right, let me tell you about my couple tricks here. Ignore that. Um, all right, first off, you want to taste it. And you want to taste for saltiness. You want it to be like, what I always say, salty as a Lay's potato chip. Man. <laughs> area. So you want this as salty as a Lay's potato chip. That means, for those of you who have no idea what Lay's is, or for those of you health nuts who have never even seen a bag of these, their, their, chip, <laughs> their campaign is hilarious. Their campaign is like, you know, so good, can't eat just one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm dying. Uh -huh. I'm like literally dying. Okay, their, their campaign is so good, can't eat just one. And that's how you want this. You want it that salty that every time you take a bite, you're like, oh, I want another bite. Oh, I want another bite. That's how salty you want it. And, and for, you know, for those of you who are measuring, this is three to four tablespoons per gallon or three to four tablespoons for five, per five pounds of vegetables. That's the tip. So it's pretty easy. It's pretty salty. You also want to make this like a salad. So think of this as a salad. Mm. Like balance it. Like look at this beautiful thing. I'm not, <laughs> look at that. Like it's really balanced in color. There's not like an overabundance of one kind of vegetable. I think it's always good to have cabbage as a base. Like if you're making a salad, you don't have lettuce be your base, mm -hmm. right? So that's what the cabbage serves as. And then you add all these other vegetables to, more as like spices, more as, you know, like, what would you call that? Flavors. Flavors. I was going to say. I was getting quiz, I'm sorry. Accoutrement? That's not the right, right word yes, at all. No. Layers. Anywho, you know what we're talking about. You want to add, you know, these flavors in a very layered way so that you're not you're not making it taste weird. And I think a lot of people are trying to be healthy, and that's one reason to eat kimchi. And when you're doing that, it can be really easy to add foods that are healthy. So people start adding things like chlorella and spirulina and like superfoods in here and all this stuff. And it's like, you just keep it simple. Just keep it simple. You're not gonna do it wrong. There's no wrong way to do it. It's a fermented slaw. It's a fermented salad. That's what it is. It's super simple. It, this is so good. It's really, really good. Now that good. I can like get closer to it, I think it, maybe? I'm doing better now. No, it's awesome. I know, it's calmed down a little. Whew. I think it was the shock of the onion. That was intense. You can use red onions, you can use white onions, you can use any kind of onions. So look what we're gonna use for the Crocs today. This is um, from the company Pickle It. I do not like, you know, make any money off of telling you this. I just like them. There's also these things you can buy on like Amazon or eBay and they're just like airlocks on top of mason jars. You can buy just the, the airlock themselves. You can make those with, you know, go to a brewery, uh, like a brewing supply company and get a drill, make this yourself. It's really easy. Um, I like using airlocks at home, especially with kimchi because this stuff is smelly when it ferments. Mm -hmm. So it keeps your house from smelling <laughs> like crazy, but also it keeps the mold down. And I find for small batches, you're going to have a higher yield. So that's why I usually use airlocks. You don't have to. You can use Crocs. I've used little Crocs a lot, but I just, less mold, it goes better. You have a higher yield in the end. So I've kind of moved toward this over the years. So let's stuff this in and kind of show how it's done. Um, I'll start stuffing and if it, you know, if I can't see in a few minutes, <laughs> then uh, let's see what happens. But the salt content is right. I can really tell by the taste. Yeah. You definitely don't want to use too much salt because I've done that before. And then you'll have something, a jar of beautiful fermented veggies that you don't even want to go near. Well, you could rinse them like they did in the olden days. You yep. could rinse them. Yeah, you rinse the salt off. So I could rinse those and eat it. Yep. But then I, you're rinsing off some of the other good stuff. 
can you see how much water is in here now from adding the salt? Like we have like straight up liquid. It's beautiful. So the trick is to get all the air bubbles out. So you're gonna smash this down, really smash it down. Get, you know, these vegetables like really tamped down into this jar. I think I'm going blind. <laughs> is, it, is it getting to you again? Yeah. Oh, it's not to me. Good. I think I got over it. Good. Well, I don't want to be careful of saying that because. So I'm going to add a little bit more liquid. Sure. Because look at all of that. That's like oh, standard man. veggie juice. I haven't added any liquid to this. And when I push it down, the liquid's at least halfway up. If not. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, well, so I'm going to keep a space in this one. Actually, you know what? I want a little bit more space. I'm actually going to take a little bit out because I've done this before. And there's so much water in Napa cabbage that you're going to end up with this overflowing if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. So look at that, folks. About an inch and a half um, leeway there at the top of the lid. Okay, so what's next is um, let's talk about how to seal up these little airlocks. So actually what I would do at this point is I'm gonna wipe down the edge. You wanna keep this pretty clean um, around the edges, um, a little bit on the inside too, and then you can wash off the outside when you're done. You're gonna clamp this down, and then you have the airlock situation here. There's a fill line, and I'll kinda of show you this up close. So I have water, just plain water, and there's a fill line, I'm gonna go right to the fill line. There it is, and what this does is it keeps the oxygen from coming in, but it allows for the carbon dioxide to come out. So that's going to keep mold down. You can you have a little lid to put on the end there. You can also fill it with grain alcohol, which helps to keep it super sanitized. Dang, girl. That's what I do. I've never heard that too. Really? No. Yeah, that means no germs coming in. What? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. I love learning new things. That's a good one. Yeah, then I rinse it off. I'm going to set that, you know, somewhere on my counter and let it just sit there for the next two to four weeks. You know, probably in like a week and a half, two weeks, and we'll be like, okay, I'm ready for some kimchi, and I'll open one of them up. The other one I'll let go the, four, the full four weeks. And then you can basically take the lid off and then put a plastic lid on, put it in the fridge for this guy. Or with the other one, there's like a little um, stopper that you can stick in the top of the, uh, the lid. Once you're done, you take out the airlock, you put the little stopper in, put it in the fridge, and then it's ready to eat. So it's pretty convenient. And it'll keep fermenting slowly in the fridge. Very slowly. Though. I've kept some up to a year, and it is amazing after a year. I've That's kept some for years. Really? Years. I mean, well, because, you know, I, I used to own a sauerkraut company, mm -hmm. and so I would, like, put stuff in the back of my fridge so that I could sample it regularly. I wanted to know mm -hmm. what happened after three years or four years. One time we had a brine, and we took it out, and it was carbonated. We had... Mm, champagne that's brine. That's amazing. I know. It was wow. delicious. That's awesome. So, voila, everybody. I love how I turned the, the word voila into voila, like some I think southern that's what thing. Do. Mm -hmm. Voila. Voila, y'all. <laughs> no, this Kimchi. is it. Looks good, doesn't it? Looks it's going to get. It's kind of orange. It's going to turn more red um, as the, flake, the chili flakes get dissolved in there. It's beautiful. Woohoo! All right. All right. Yeah.